All right, so um, hope you guys had a good Easter and uh, everything went well. Uh, you enjoyed the time with the family that you got to see. Um, and uh, we're going to jump back into uh, the Hundred Years' War. We're almost done with feudalism. I think we have like five slides left. And uh, then we're going to get to the Renaissance. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll be back into the Enlightenment aspects um, very soon. So um, I have started to look at some of your uh, uh, plague and um, epidemic uh, work that you turned in. Um, for those of you that did turn it in and that I've seen so far, uh, you guys did a, a good job. You answered the questions that I asked you to do. Um, uh, some of you failed to follow the instructions and actually went over and tried to do what we're going through now. But you got to remember that um, our, our our pandemic is not finished. We we don't have final numbers yet. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's why I wanted you to stay away from it. Um, but uh, I will accept it as a grade um, and put it in the uh, grade book for you. Uh, so, the Hundred Years' War was what we left with. Um, remember, we were looking at the, the downfall of feudalism. Uh, we had looked at how the bubonic plague forced people to move from uh, manor houses <clears throat> and manors to uh, the cities now. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, to, uh, to provide uh, work for... Um, the people that were living in the cities. So they kind of uh, really pushed feudalism out because they weren't um, needed anymore by lords. Uh, they were basically working almost for themselves. Um, remember that we were looking at the Hundred Years' War between France and um, England. Um, and it ends up lasting for 116 years. Um, and the, the war was not continuous. Uh, it was an off and on aspect. And um, if you watch the video uh, that is um, within the Nearpod, uh, it's, it's interesting to see. The, the video, I will say, is kind of dry. It gives more of um, the factual aspects. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not visually appealing, we'll put it that way. Um, but uh, it does give some information on how this war was not continuous. It, uh, they took breaks, basically, um, within in the war because uh, <clears throat> they really were continuously losing kings and, and um, noble leaders during this time. And it forced England and France to uh, find out who was leading and if that person was actually interested in trying to... Oh, excuse me. Man, man trying to take uh, take over uh, France if you were from England or regaining what you had lost if you were France and um, you were um, trying to get it back from England. So um, money was obviously uh, extremely hard to come by during this time. Um, remember, professional armies started to be the norm. Uh, but remember, the French army at the beginning of this uh, was was way behind the English army. Um, we'll see by the end of this that they start using gunpowder, um, and it adds uh, a new element to the uh, the Hundred Years' War that brings France um, to the English level uh, and helps them um, actually get a truce with France and, and slowly gain back their territory. Um, so we'll start off by talking about this King Edward guy. Okay, he um his idea is, is that when he lands in France, he doesn't land in France to um <clears throat> actually battle with the French army. What he wanted to do was set everything on fire. So his idea was to go around and set as much aspects on fire, villages, food, anything he could get his, you know, hands on um to basically starve the French people and force them to um, surrender and join his military. Um, it works for the most part. Eh. He, he ends up defeating a French army because the English had the longbow and the French were at, at the beginning of this war were, were weak. 
um, <clears throat> militarily. They had a bigger military. They just didn't have the the weapons that the the English did. Um, then the Black Death hits, and uh, it halts pretty much the Hundred Years' War for <clears throat> a good ten years. Um, when it comes back, uh, when when the the war comes back. Um, England actually ends up capturing King John II of France. So you're getting the other person's leader. Problem is, is obviously there's always somebody to, uh, to take his place as king. So, uh, you get this person. Uh, who, yeah, he's still alive. Excuse me again. Man. Uh, he's, he's still alive. But, um, the, the English have him. So, of course, the English say, hey, um, we're going to you for ransom so you know maybe maybe if they pay something or give us uh, land we'll, we'll give you back um of course the english don't give him back he actually ends up dying in london um and um this thrusted the french into a civil war because uh, now you have people fighting on who is um actually the leader um you have different uh, houses. Um, they called like uh, uh, people, um, and their families were called houses, uh, and they all had noble blood, and they were fighting to find out who would be king of France. Um, so um, he, his son, actually King Charles, takes over, and um, France actually does pretty decent in this point in time of the Hundred Years War. They gain back most of the land that they lost. There are about like three or four little areas um, along the English Channel in the Atlantic Ocean that they do not uh, do not regain, but they end up gaining most of their land back. So um, we're gonna move on to this guy Henry V. Okay, um, he ends up defeating France in battle. He he ends up getting. Uh, this um, this decisive defeat, and uh, his whole goal was to conquer the entirety of France. That's what he wants. He he went home, uh, came back, and he was like, you know what? I want to conquer all of France. That's my goal. Um, so what he what he ends up doing instead of uh, uh, purely conquering the entirety of France by military aspects. He actually annexes, remember that word annexing, to take by force, but really not with a military. Um, you have a military backing you, but like, there's not much bloodshed, if any. Um, so, and, and he gains this peace in this, by uh, annexing and saying that uh, this is how he gains his land, um, by forcing the French to name him successor. Oh, excuse me again. Successor to uh, the the king. So when the king died, he would be him that would take over because he was going to marry the king's son. He was going to um, push, or not marry the king's son, good lord, marry the king's daughter. And uh, he's going to push um, the rest of the family out. And hey, he'd become king of France and he would be king of England and the king of France at the same time. So there'd be no need to war anymore and he would have all the territory. Um, so he doesn't truly get that. He dies in 1421, and we get to this lady named Joan of Arc, okay? Uh, you guys probably have heard of her. Most of you have. Um, at this point in time, uh, the, the French are looking for a, um, a, uh, like a, a, a martyr, pretty much. A person who is going to, um really uh get uh you know everybody going um she never thought she would end up being captured or killed uh, which she is but she was really looked at as being a uh as a as a martyr after she um is done uh with this life uh because of what she has done um for the french she fought for the french she actually led a lot of french um army uh armies so if you go to slide, hold on, um, 62, uh, you will see a depiction of Joan of Arc. Um, and um, she, she was very well respected, and uh, the English knew that they had to capture her if they, if they wanted to um, 
really break the back of, of the the French people. Um, so uh, she she ends up being captured, and um, what she tells them um, when she's captured is that she has views uh, from God. She has these um, you know epiphanies or whatever you want to call them, um, and uh, instead, uh, I mean, because she's not a um, a saint or anything, so instead of just letting her run away in a prison. The um, English label her a heretic, and they go, you're going to die by burning at the stake. So Joan of Arc um, really helps with unity in France. Um, she was only 17 when she first started this stuff. Um, she hear, claims to hear voices of saints urging her to save France, and she goes and fights. She um, is called um, the Maid of Orleans. Um, she was tried, and then she was burnt to death by the uh, by the English because of being a heretic. Um, some of that says that they have heard God and or um, the voice of saints or you know angels or something, and she has not really done that. So Joan of Arc um, <clears throat> really kind of uh, pushes the the French over the edge. Um, and actually helps them uh, end um, uh, what uh, what the Hundred Years' War was. Um, there is a truce. Uh, the French actually end up beating the English because of the use of gunpowder, like I said earlier in the video. And um, this this truce that they they gain uh, gives back most of the French land to them. Um, Except for like three or four little areas again along the English Channel and along the um, uh, along the the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So the impact of this war, um, when you really look at it, um, you have major battles throughout uh, all of of France, mostly um, central to northern areas. Um, mostly more up near England also. If, so if you look at the map that's on um, slide 66, uh, you can kind of see the English possessions, French possessions, and the major battles. And um, they are really concentrated more up, uh, up north near Normandy, um, which when you guys get to uh, U.S. history and uh, modern world history, you will see how Normandy once again comes into play. Um, so uh, the next slide is the last slide, I think. Um, the Hundred Years' War contributed to the decline of feudalism by helping to shift power from feudal lords to monarchs and to the common people again. So these feudal lords uh, end up losing their power because of this, because monarchs now, remember, uh, were, were taxing people heavy, heavier and paying people to actually be a part of their military by using the tax money. Um, so these professional armies really are uh, helping. Um, as a result, kings no longer relied uh, as much on nobles to supply knights for their armies. They just basically went out and recruited people and said, hey, you're fighting for me and I'm going to pay you. Um, the new, new feeling of nationalism, remember nationalism is pride in one's country, uh, also shifted power away from lords because... When you lived in a manor um, in a lord, you remember you were more loyal to that lord than to the king that you were living under. Um, so um, now they feel more loyal to that monarch and more lo lo more loyal to the uh, um, to to the the country that they live in. Um, and what this does is, this, you know, the war, uh, the Hundred Years' War, created a sense of uh, national unity and patriotism on both sides. Like, hey, um, the French beat the English. Yeah, you know, we're, we're better than them. And then the English would be like, well, you know, you know, we we captured we captured your king and we captured Joan of Arc. We we basically tore your heart out. Even though you beat us, we took your your national symbols. Um, so. So you had this uh, argument and this belief of uh, of uh, patriotism um, and nationalism within the uh, um, the ranks of the citizens of uh, France and England. So, good thing is feudalism is finished.
Um, bad thing is, is I have a writing prompt for you for the uh, the rest of the of, of the week. That's what you're going to do. Um, uh, so what you're going to do, and I'll explain it here, <clears throat> and then I'll I'll give you guys uh, also an explanation in, in, in typing on on classroom. Um, you're going to compare Joan of Arc to a modern woman that has done something extraordinary. Uh, you can pick anyone from 1900 to present day. So someone like maybe like Rosa Parks, um, uh, maybe like Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, um, let's try to think. You could even look at maybe like the Serena and Venus Williams. Um, those those types of of, of females. Uh, it can be sports related, political related, uh, economic related. It doesn't matter uh, who you choose, but make sure you're choosing somebody that has um, left their mark um, or even at this moment is leaving their mark uh, within our um, our world. Um, <clears throat> try to stay away from um, trivial people. I'll, I'll put it that way. Trivial meaning that um, they might be celebrities, but they really haven't left a mark on anything. Um, they might have a lot of money because they've been in movies, but they really haven't done much. Um, those types of people. Uh, write about what this person did. Um, write about what Joan of Arc did. Compare them and compare how, how uh, as a woman, they have uh, influenced people. Um, maybe set... Uh, in motion um, movements to uh, further um, women within the society that they lived in and, and within what we live in today. Um, why was she so important? Uh, you know, did uh, maybe look like Rosa Parks? She she just didn't feel like getting up and moving to the back of the bus, and, and it started a movement. Um, there are there are uh, women out there, and I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a list of, of people, like influential women. Um, maybe find a website um, from 1900 till today um, that you guys can can utilize and and try to help out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So this will be your last thing for feudalism, and uh, your 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 final grade for feudalism until we move into. Uh, the renaissance um if you have questions please 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 ask uh i'm going to once again uh probably um tomorrow maybe thursday or friday um one of the next three days uh i'm going to set up times for an hour well i'll just start a google meet and you guys can um join and uh ask questions if you have questions um, and if not, then that's, it's all on you. Um, I'm, I'll make myself available for you guys to, to ask questions, um, and get the help that you need if you need it. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. And, um, we, I might, I'll probably video cast one more time to you guys, uh, to start off with, um, uh, the Renaissance. So, um. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.